tried to make me, for two weeks straight, make me believe my daughter did this, that she committed suicide, that she actually did this. And I'm like, no, it's not my daughter. It's not my daughter. Every single day, day in and day out. In 2015, Tiffany Valiente was struck and killed by an NJ Transit train on a remote section of track four miles from her Galloway Township home. The state's medical examiner deemed the death a suicide. Tiffany's family disagrees. They insist she was happy and had everything to live for. She had, she had the world so far ahead of her, you know what I mean? Just, just she grasped it and she was running with it, you know, just, she loved life. And she wanted to do things in life. Tiffany's father, Stephen, created projects to stay busy and keep his lost daughter close to him, to preserve her memory. In the backyard, a memorial, and this massive tea made from a tree he cut down. I still lay in bed at night waiting for her to get off work from Wawa, you know, just, well, she should be pulling in any time. It, you know, goes through my head, you know, but she never shows up, so it makes it hard. Tiffany's mother took walks along roads near her home to help cope with the confusion and heartache. A few weeks after the tragedy, she found her daughter's shoes and headband. And I lost it, I was freaking out. I mean, I was a mess. A lady pulled over to see if I was okay. And I, you know, I'm like, get off the grass. And I was trying to call my husband, my family. They finally came, they called the cops. This made it even more real that she didn't do this. And we needed somebody to look into it and, and try to find out what exactly happened to her. And I don't feel they did that. The medical examiner and NJ Transit Police concluded Tiffany left a party across the street and dropped her phone at the end of her driveway. They then said she walked to a remote area of tracks more than four miles away and jumped in front of an oncoming train in complete darkness. Based on autopsy photos, Tiffany's feet were pristine, no cuts or abrasions. The family wondered, how could she have walked barefoot for that distance over rocky terrain without injuring or even getting her feet dirty? I uh, honestly, I think it's disgusting that they would even think that a child would walk around without any shorts on um, and any shoes, especially, especially the only time my daughter took her shoes off is when she would go in the house. Other than that, she always wore shoes outside. The state medical examiner's office rushed to judgment and concluded that this was suicide. A rape kit was never utilized uh, on Tiffany, but most importantly, a psychiatric or psychological autopsy wasn't done, where you interview the family, the teachers, the friends, and you see what was going on with her life. If they had done that, um, the, they would not have concluded this was suicide. Well, I could have done a better job than they did. And I'm, I'm not even, you know, I don't have a degree in it. I just, these are things, simple things they screwed up on. So many things did not add up, and the investigation seemed incomplete and sloppy. They felt the whole case was mishandled, and Tiffany was the victim of a kidnapping and murder. In 2016, the family's attorney filed a lawsuit seeking to overturn the finding and change her death certificate. There will never be an amount of justice. The only way is to bring her back, but we know that's not going to happen. Um, but to just have the true answers on what happened that night. Near the site of the death, adjacent to the train tracks, Tiffany's father constructed yet another memorial. This one with lights, music, a roof, and filled with messages and reminders of a loved one lost. Her spirit's here, it's still here until, the, until she rests in peace and, and find, somebody finds out what happened to her. She, she can't rest. But we need answers. <laughs>